Hi everyone, I'm Felipe Schmidt, part of the architecture team at ITSM Group. In today's video, we're going to start talking about one very interesting topic, service portal. In this first video, we're going to start talking about some basics on how to create a portal and also see some very useful tricks that will be very helpful when developing on the service portal. In future videos, we are also covering other parts of the application, such as widgets and pages. So let's get started. The service portal has its own application. So if you look for service portal in the backend, you're going to find the, the application and its related content. I would say that there are main three parts of the service portal. Of course, it depends on what you're dealing with, but portals is one of the most important ones as well as pages and widgets. If we're going to talk about themes, of course, CSS, it's also important, but those three are the main ones, I would say. So in today's video, as said, we are going to cover how to create a portal. As you see here, you have the URL suffix that tells you how you're going to access this portal. The portal itself can be a portal to share knowledge, for example, as we have here the knowledge portal. You also might have one portal for customer service management, for example, in which your customers are going to raise tickets from there. Another example is the service portal. I would say it's the most usual one, which your employees can raise requests through the service portal. So the service portal is the most usual one. And if you click here to the service portal home, you're going to be redirected directly to the service portal. In here, we can also delete these parameters in here but slash sp is exactly the URL suffix on how you're going to access this portal, as I mentioned previously. Each of the portals, they contain pages, and those pages we can access and see which page we are when we identify this ID. Whenever we see ID equals something, after everything after the equals, we can identify as our page. In this example here, we are in the SC category page, and if we just navigate through the service portal, we are going to land in different pages. For example, index where we are right now. And if I go to knowledge base, I will be in the KB view two, for example, and so on. This hint is on how can you identify in which page you are. And one cool hint that I don't see many people using is if you control right click, preferably over some content on the page, you will see the, the options of the widget. And if you use show widget customizations, you're going to highlight all the widgets that are on the page. With that, you can simply and easily identify by checking this eye here with the information that the widget diagnostics will appear. So you have the control to see everything about the widgets, everything which is being loaded on the page right now. It's definitely here for you. So you can open then the widget on the platform itself. Whenever you click there, you're going to have the widget loaded in the backend. And why this is important and useful? Because you can see, for example, the widget breadcrumbs in this example, which pages this widget is included. In this case here, we can see all the IDs where this widget is being used. And whenever you want to simply deactivate this, you can simply right, control right click and hide widget customizations, or you can simply refresh the page and this will be gone. So far, we have spoken on how to access a portal, but now the main part is how can I create one portal? And this is what we are going to see right now. So there are two ways that you can simply access to create one portal. Whenever you go to the backend and you create a portal by clicking on this module here, and then you click on new, or you can also do it by the service portal configuration, which you have slash SP config. And this is where I really prefer to do so because I find this very intuitive. So you can go to the branding editor from a service portal, designer, page editor, widget editor, and also the new portal, for example, whenever you need to create a new one. In this example here, we are going to create one, for example, for ITSM group. And we're going to access this with IT only. And the other fields you're going to fill out, for example, home page, page to load when no page is specified. For example, I want that to be the index page. 
So on those fields, we are going to mainly select pages in case, for example, KB homepage, login page, um, page not found. But also here you have two different things, which are which is the menu and also the theme, which has to do with the colors and everything that will be shown to the end user in the service portal. You can also add logos and icons in here, but I will do it afterwards. So let's adding some pages in here. We have the KB, KB view, for example. We have also some out of the box pages that we can use and it will be helpful for us to make it faster. But let's only do this for now. And if I save, our record was added, meaning that we can already access our portal. Since we have added our portal with URL suffix IT, means that we can simply go to copy our URL slash IT and I will be able to access my portal already, which is already created as you've seen here. And there is one thing that we can also add in here by directly setting up our portal and it's the main menu. We don't have it here, but we can simply add this SP header menu from here and also add a theme and let's add this. And we can simply save and we can refresh our portal. Then we have our menu here that is loaded right now. And this menu just brings us to other pages of the portal, which are out of the box for now. As a wrap up, you could see that with a few clicks, we were able to create a portal and also with some hints to see which widgets are being rendered in the page by using the control and right click and show widget customizations. We are able also to see the content of the page. And if we want to see more, let's check the next video.